And we're to the end of it. Woo! I've been giving you cheese and tuna as we have been isolated in the tiny. Woo! Probably not the best idea. But, oh, let me burp. Hang on, sorry. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm so sorry. I am not smelling like a spring fresh rose. Anyway, let me get a little more comfortable here. Uh, I think I am back. Yep. He pushed the picture out of his mind. It was a false memory. He was troubled by false memories occasionally. They did not matter so long as one knew them for what they were. Some things had happened, others had not happened. He turned back to the chessboard and picked up the white knight again. Almost in the same instant, it dropped onto the board with a clatter. He had started as though a pen had written into him. A shrill trumpet call had pierced the air. But, sorry, a shrill trumpet call had pierced the air. It was the bulletin. Victory! It always meant victory when a trumpet call preceded the news. A sort of electric thrill ran through the cafe. Even the waiters had started and pricked up their ears. The trumpet call had let loose an enormous volume of noise. Already an excited voice was gabbling from the telescreen. But even as it started, it was almost drowned by a roar of cheering from outside. The news had run round the streets like magic. He could hear just enough of what was issuing from the telescreen to realize that it had all happened as he had foreseen. A vast seaborne armada secretly assembled a sudden blow in the enemy's rear. The white arrow tearing across the tail of the black. Fragments of triumphant phrases pushed themselves through the din. Vast strategic maneuver, perfect coordination, utter rout, half a million prisoners, complete demoralization, control of the whole of Africa, bring the war within measurable distance of its end. Victory, greatest victory in human history. Victory, victory, victory. Under the table, Winston's feet made convulsive movements. He had not stirred from his seat, but in his mind he was running, swiftly running. He was with the crowds outside, cheering himself deaf. He looked up again at the portrait of Big Brother, the colossus that bestrode the world, the rock against which the hordes of Asia dashed themselves in vain. He thought how ten minutes ago, yes, only ten minutes ago, there had still been equivocation in his heart as he wondered whether the news from the front would be a victory or defeat. Ah, uh, it was more than a Eurasian army that had perished. Much had changed in him since the first day in the Ministry of Love. But the final indispensable healing change had never happened until this moment. The voice from the telescreen was still pouring forth its tale of prisoners and booty and slaughter, but the shouting outside had died down a little. The waiters were turning back to their work. One of them approached with the gin bottle. Winston, sitting in a blissful dream, paid no attention as his glass was filled up. He was not running or cheering any longer. He was back in the ministry of love with everything forgiven. His soul white as snow. He was in the public dock, confessing everything, implicating everybody. He was walking down the white-tiled corridor with the feeling of walking in sunlight and an armed guard at his back. The long-hoped-for bullet was entering his brain. He gazed up at the enormous face. Forty years it had taken him to learn what kind of smile was hidden beneath the dark mustache. Oh, cruel, needless misunderstanding. Oh, stubborn, self-wheeled exile from the loving breast. Two gin-scented tears trickled down the sides of his nose. But it was all right. Everything was all right. 
the struggle was finished. He had won the victory over himself. He loved Big Brother. All right, Doozy. I think we'll start Stephen King. Blaze next time. I don't know if you'll like as much as you did 1984. But I do enjoy you doing the purr, purr, purr thing as I read to you. It's not so alone.